Now, the great thing about this module uh, is that it's very wide and varied. We talk about lots of different topics within the parameters of, of HR. So uh, there'll be topics that go into legislation in a lot of detail, and you might get really excited about that. Uh, there'll be other topics that aren't so much talk about legislation, uh, but it'll be talking about the psychology of people, understanding how people think and act and why they do what they do. Uh, and other students might find that more fascinating. So there's lots of variety. It's, it's a really unusual, different module with lots to get your teeth into. Um, how is it delivered? I suppose that is the next question. Well, you've obviously got the virtual learning environment. You've got this introductory video from me. But what you'll also get is every couple of weeks, you'll get another video introducing you to each new topic area. And I'll do that video. So you've got it from the, the, the module leader's mouth, the exact detail of what it is that you're going to be covering. So the point at which inventory is recorded is if it's in the inventory records. So here it, here it is recorded if it's in the inventory records. So for completeness, we want to make sure that all the physical inventory is recorded in the inventory records. So as I say, we do this at the inventory count process. So we would go physical inventory. I'm just saying via the inventory count because that's when we would do it. And we would trace the physical inventory to the inventory record. So we'd go and find physical inventory and say, right, where is this inventory in the inventory records? Here's a box of widgets. Where is this box of widgets recorded in the inventory records? And we do that at the inventory count. So that is helping prove completeness. Now, it doesn't completely do that because obviously there could be some physical inventory elsewhere that we're unaware of. So there are other things we would have to do for completeness, but that is one procedure that we would do. Compound sentences generally you'll be okay with. What worries me more is the complex sentences. Now, what is a complex sentence? Well, it has a particular meaning in English. Let's look at these two sentences. The first one, Susie eats chocolate, comma, and Mark buys bananas, full stop. The next one, Susie eats chocolate while Mark buys bananas. In this first sentence, Susie can eat chocolate whenever she likes. Both clauses are independent from each other. Okay, That independence is what makes them easier to understand. That independence is what makes them a compound, it makes this a compound sentence. But the next sentence, Susie can only eat chocolate at the time of Mark's buying the bananas. You couldn't separate these into two separate sentences. You couldn't say Susie eats chocolate, full stop, while Mark buys bananas, full stop, because you, you lose this link, this complex link between them. Uh, so have a look at that example and see if you can produce the first section of the cash flow statement by writing down the profits for that business and then removing non-cash incomes and non-cash costs. Hopefully you'll pause for a second and come back and I'll have the answer up. So, here we have an answer. Um, I start with, uh, I'm trying to produce purely section one to the cash flow statement. That's called cash from operating. I start by writing down my profits of 300. I then come on to remove anything that's a non-cash income or expense. Uh, if you struggle with this, by the way, don't worry, everybody does. And I'll tell you a little tip to help your brain cope with it during your assessment. So and the challenges today, and we've seen this now, of course, is, um, I mean, you, I love that picture there of the, uh, you know, this is the industrial era. Uh, Looks like um, looks like London on a Saturday afternoon, doesn't it? But no, seriously, I mean, you can imagine that's the pollution that we used to put into the atmosphere comparatively, and in some places still do, unfortunately. 
So what we're trying to do at the moment is move away from this concept of the industrial era to actually what we call now the information age. And this is why you're studying HRM in an international context, because of course, this is important of understanding how we're going to move the processes and the people to meet the needs of this new era such. And what you're going to be looking to do is to basically to recreate the organization. Um, so, and bring in people who can actually bring in their creativity, energy, foresight. Uh, in return for you as HRM people and, and managers of making sure you're nurturing and developing enthusiasm for the future.